Hello, 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 and welcome to Build Your Salon Business Talk. I'm excited tonight because I'm taking the show in a different direction to give you a better experience. Tonight we have a tax consultant on. This is different from having the beauty professionals on giving us information. I wanted to step outside the box a little bit and bring you even more information tonight. So what we are all about is sharing information that's gonna help you, the professionals, get to the next level, whatever your next level is, be able to build a bigger business, to be able to expand, to be able to grow, to be able to do more things, bigger things, better things. So tonight we have a tax consultant on, and this is a platform where we bring in individuals that's gonna help you, I think we need to adjust, there we go. (laughs) bring you individuals that's gonna help you be able to build your business better, to be able to take it to the next step. And I'm excited to talk uh, to our special guest that we have tonight. But before we jump into that, I need you to go ahead on and hit that share button as always. While you tap that share button, I'm gonna grab my pen and paper because listen, I know we're gonna take some notes tonight. So you go ahead on and hit the share button. I'm gonna go ahead on and grab a pen so that I can have, there we go. I got my pen, I got my paper together so that I can be able to take notes and learn tonight right along with you. While you are hitting that share button as well, give me the thumbs up and make sure that you can hear me clearly because I am your host, Alicia Monique, salon stylist coach, product development consultant and salon business builder expert, yes partnering with you, the salon suite stylists and salon owners to help you reestablish your backend structure so that together we are able to build a team, build your clientele, increase those retail sales, and possibly develop your hair product line all while creating a scalable, profitable beauty business. Now I do this through either my mentorship three month program. I do this through our 90 minute strategy session where we're really strategizing and putting your business together. But I also do this inside of the Salon Business Blueprint Club. This is a membership platform where you have access to a library of resources to be able to help you learn and grow your business. We'll talk more about that later because my special guest is waiting and I can't wait to share with you tonight the information that she has. So without further ado, I don't even know how many years, you know how we do it. Like they have years experience, but we have a task consultant tonight. I don't even think it matters how many years experience she have, but all that matters is that she is resorts, re, 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 resourceful. You know the word, come, come on now, you know the word. She is resourceful and she's gonna give us some information tonight that we can absolutely use to build our businesses, to make our business stronger, to make our business withstand the times and be able to be uh, create a scalable business. So. This is a lot of things that I share with you all the time, but to get the information from a tax consultant, you're really going to benefit from this tonight. So without further ado, let me stop talking. Get your pens, get your paper together, hit that share button, give us the thumbs up, show those heart for our special guest tonight. Hello, 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 hello. It's LaVisha King from King Financial um, Services. Thank you for joining us. Hey, what's going on? How are you doing? I am doing awesome. So tell us a little bit about who you are. Who, who is LaVisha King? Who is King Financials? Like, what is it that we need to know? My, like she said, my name is LaVisha King. I am the founder of King Financial Services, which is located in Birmingham, Alabama. I have been doing taxes and business startup for over, oh my gosh, my son is actually 23. So we have to at least say 17 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. But I have owned King Financial Services for seven years. Um, some of the things that we do at King Financial Services, we do personal and business taxes. We also do business startup. I'm one of those ones who do you call when you want to, when you say, Hey, I want to start this business. What do I need to do first? Mm-hmm. I'll walk you through the steps. I help you get everything you need to make sure your business is a legit business. We go over the pros and cons dealing with your business. Um, we also help you do an outline of what your business will consist of. 
Um, I'm also a public notary. I also do uh, business uh, startup for business credit startup, help you start your credit also for your business, separate your business from yourself, from your your business EIN, from your social, personal social. Mm-hmm. I also do, well, I feel like, feel like I'm forgetting something. Because um, it's a lot, that's why. <laughs> Trade lines. We also offer trade lines to help you boost your business. Because sometimes when you start your business, your business has no credit. So you have to make sure your personal credit is okay. And then we can add trade lines to your personal credit to to help boost your business credit to get you that first loan. Because once you get that first loan, you're okay. You can no longer have to use your personal credit. Right. I think that's about is is that about it? Okay. So we gonna we have some questions for you tonight. Like we listed a mouthful. If you guys are listening, I know you like, what? Oh my God, I needed this. So be sure that you type your questions in the comments. We want to be able to answer your questions tonight. Remember, there's no such thing as a dumb question. I don't believe in that. But there is a such thing as you don't know what you don't know. So you're going to find out tonight. And if we're not covering it fast enough or we don't mention it, I want you to comment your question because we're going to cover it. We want to make sure that um, whatever concerns, thoughts, or things that you somebody might have told you and you like, I don't know about that. Type that question down in the comment box. We want to be sure to answer those questions for you tonight. So we're going to jump in. So we got a little background. We know what King Consultant is about. I mean, a financial is about. Uh, we have our tax consultant tonight. and We want to be able to answer your questions. We want you to, to get some clarity tonight on why you need to do certain things. I am a huge fan of, like, tell me why. Don't just tell me how to do stuff, but tell me why am I doing this? Because when you give, you give me the how and you give me the why, now it makes sense. Now I know how to do it, but you gave me that why. So it sort of gives me that extra push on getting it done because I know why am I doing this? I know why it's important. So we want to start first with, um, if you can explain to us why is it important to have a proper business structure and foundation? And then how do we go about getting that done? Okay. So one of the things that in order to people always say, Hey, I'm going to start a business. Mm -hmm. Then they go out, they start doing some of the things that they're doing within their business, but they never do the paperwork or the foundation part. And they run into issues on down the line. Mm -hmm. So with that, you want to make sure you have your EIN set up with an IRS. You want to make sure you have your business name set up with the state that's so important because you don't want to have a business name with someone else have. So you want to have your artists and corporations set up your name reservation. Make sure no one else have that name before you set up any of those steps. So let me start over. So the first step is going to be the name reserve. You want to make sure that you, that that name is available within your state. Mm -hmm. Once that name is available within your state, then you're going to go on the IRS website and set up your EIN number. Okay. Once you set up your EIN number, then you can do your artist or corporation paperwork. Okay. And that's with the state. And that's yes. with the state. Okay. So we know where we're state. going. We got state stuff. We got IRS stuff that we, we have to get set up. So this is basically the things that we need to establish ourselves as a business. Correct. Okay. So Correct. this is our structure and this is our foundation. So from here of, of setting up a business, we have to get structured first. We have to set up things in, in, in a certain order in order to be established. And so pretend I'm a, I'm a salon. I, well, I'm a stylist and I want to open a salon. So my first step will be to establish my foundation by getting my name set up, getting the EIN set up and getting uh, incorporation or LLC or something like that set up with the state first, right? Correct. So Correct. after that, like, what would be my next step? Like, what's that's my step one. What would be my next step in doing that? How? What? 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 What I do next? Okay. So after you have those three main things set up, then you can go ahead. You want to go ahead and start separating yourself from your business. Also, you want to go ahead and open up a business bank account. Okay. You want to make sure that you have your business bank account. Separate your personal money from your business money. Mm-hmm. Because that's some of the issues that some people are having now uh, with the situation with everything going on in the world today. They're finding that they're not set up properly. So they're getting denied for a lot of things. 
Right. One, and then also having a business bank account set up, that also help you when it comes down to tax time. Oh, now, okay. you know, every, all the expenses that you have dealing with your business, you know it came out of your business bank account instead of your personal account. Right. So now you don't have to spend so many hours trying to separate your business business from your personal expenses. Okay, right. So basically, we I should spend from my, where should I spend money from? Like, what what is it that I have to, what is something that I should buy from my business and what is something that I should buy from my personal? So I understand how to shop. Okay, so anything pertaining to your business, whether it's supplies, the business utility, water bill, anything pertaining to your business should come out of your business account. Okay. When you when you first set up and set up everything dealing with your business, before you do everything, you have to make sure that you have your budget done. So you won't run into the problem of overspending. You won't run into the problem of not taking care of your personal need also. Because without a budget, you don't know what you're going to be able to pay yourself. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So dealing with the business expenses, anything pertaining to the business should come out of the business account. Okay, so nothing personal. Nothing personal. Out of that. So where do nothing I gro personal. so where do I grocery shop at? The grocery shop will fall back on your personal expenses. When gotcha. you're paying yourself, your budget, you're doing a monthly budget and seeing what you can afford to pay yourself. Got you. And then from there, whatever I need in my house will come out of my personal account. Whatever I need to run from the run the business comes out of the business account. Correct. Okay. Okay. Correct. So we got, are you guys following? Go ahead on and give us the thumbs up. If you like, okay, I, I'm, I'm following. I got that part. We want to make sure that you stay on track and that you get the information. So that's why we're going to take it piece by piece so that as someone say, oh, do you have this? Do you have this? Do you have this? You can look at it and see what piece needs to be set up where. So if you have any questions, please comment those questions. If you get in, you're rolling with us. You like, I got it. Finally. Hit the thumbs up and you like, yeah, girl, mm -hmm, I finally get it. I got it. So now we, we've set up our structure and we set up our foundation. We got the information. Our next step is get that business bank account so we can start separating our money. And then inside of separating the money, we're actually going to be able to pay ourselves. And when we pay ourselves, this is where you grocery shop at. If you're buying supplies or stuff like that from the business, you're going to buy that out of the business account. So say we need some type of a, a business loan, right? We're opening a salon and we don't really have enough money for, let's say, chairs or, or stations or uh, construction maybe. How do we go about applying for a loan? And what are some of the things that we need to have when we apply for the loan? Some of the things that they're going to ask for, I'm seeing a lot of the issues now dealing with what's going on in the world today. They're going to ask for your EIN number. They're going to ask you for your artisan corporation. They're going to ask you for your um, pro law, uh, profit and loss. They're going to ask you for your taxes. That's a big issue that people are facing now because they're filing. Some of them have never filed the business taxes. Mm -hmm. Or some of them filed a Schedule C enough just to be able to still qualify for the EIC, so they're not claiming all their income, okay. or they're not claiming all their expenses, and now they're find, they're seeing that's an issue now when they're going in from the banks, because the banks are looking at they're asking for those type of paperwork. So if you're bringing them your last year tax return, and you said you made almost sixty thousand dollars, but you only put maybe $20,000 on paper. Mm -hmm. Now they're looking at that and saying, you don't qualify due to not enough income coming in. Right, right. So that's, those are some issues. So that's one thing you have to ask yourself when you're doing your paperwork. What are your plans for the future? You should always file your taxes correctly. Right. But another thing you should always ask yourself, what are your plans for the future? Are you setting yourself up to be able to use other people's money and stop using your money? Wow. And that's and, and like I said, that's an issue that a lot of people are facing because they they have haven't filed the business taxes. Mm -hmm. You can't qualify for the PPEs if you haven't filed your business taxes. If you have no paper trail with your business because mm -hmm. they're asking for those documents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're asking 
you um, how long you've been in business. They're asking you for how many employees, I mean, employers, employees that you have working under you. Those things or those type of questions are very important when it comes to dealing with your business and trying to get a bank loan. Because right. a bank loan is all about a paper trail. Yes, yes. So a paper trail. Let's talk about a paper trail just for a moment. Uh, a paper trail consists of having your EIN, um, making sure your your name is registered with the state, having that actual business banking um, transactions that actually go through your business banking, but more importantly, filing your taxes at the end of every year to report your actual profit or loss for that year. Correct. Okay. okay. Correct. So, and, and, and as you mentioned, a lot of the things that people are running into is actually not being truthful on the taxes. Like <laughs> in a nutshell, that's what it all is boiled down to not being truthful on your taxes. Correct. Correct. Okay. So, uh, and th so you've listed a number of things that when we're applying for a loan that we should have when we're approaching the banks for this. So let's talk a little bit about taxes. Like why let Tell us why first. Tell us why, like like you said, uh, we mentioned earlier, but can you tell us why again we need to file taxes? Like, why is this part so important? It's important because you want to establish your business income. You want to establish your business expenses. You want to separate yourself from your business. So, like I say, on down the line, you can, you can use other company money mm -hmm. instead of continuing to use your own. Yes, yes. So um, you can use somebody and, and else's money. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And like I said, also help you when you want to establish. Who who knows? What if you want to open up a second salon and now you mm -hmm. want to use a business loan instead of pulling all your money out the bank? You want to be able to get capital to buy equipment, to buy supplies or anything, uh, even a sign for your building. Mm -hmm. What if you need to buy a van to carry your stuff around in? You want to be able to be able to purchase those things and not having to pull all your money out of your personal account or all your money out of your business bank account to get established for the first couple of months. Right, right. So, so that's the importance of filing the taxes. Now, what are some of the, cause I know you see a lot of things when people bring you the taxes of not having the right information or they come to you and mention that they can't get certain loans and things like that. So what are some of the things that you see when it comes to filing taxes that we should not do? Like what is, what is, what is going on when people are filing incorrectly so that we know how to correct, how to file our taxes correctly? One of the things that I see a lot of are dealing with them, when they bring in their paperwork, when mm -hmm. they're bringing in their tax return, because I always request them to bring in a prior year tax return. When I'm looking at it and I ask them about certain things that's that that's reported on their tax return are expenses. Okay. And I ask them, so how did you get this number? Or what did you come up with this? Mm -hmm. Well, I kind of guessed on it because I couldn't find all my receipts. Or when I ask them about the income, did you pull, did you Take the time to pull your bank records. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have a, a business bank account. I, I do everything out of my personal bank account. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them are not separating themselves from their business and from their per in, in their personal life, their personal bank information. That's a lot of things that I see. And a lot of them are not keeping good receipts, keeping good, um, basically a paper trail for everything that pertains to their business for that year. Right. And Dylan your business dealing with business period you have to make sure you're keeping a paper trail keep every receipt in the world that's that, even if you think that doesn't that you may not be able to use it still keep it and be able to ask your tax preparer hey can i use this if your tax preparer if you take it just dropping your stuff off and your tax preparer is not asking you any questions or anything dealing with your business then something is probably wrong right something's probably there's always going to be some questions to ask. Right. Where this, always, right. Where this probably, come from? Why is this? Yeah. <laughs> correct. Yes. Correct. So I get correct. those questions all the time. What did you spend this on? I'm like, uh, I don't remember. I just kept the receipt though. Can you use it? So, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So write down notes. Write down. Mm -hmm. do, what I've taught my clients to do is each month, take your time out. Do
do your budget. Take your time out and do your expenses. Pull all your receipts. Pull everything that you got going on for that month. Mm -hmm. Get your scan machine, because I, I hear it all the time. Well, Miss King, the receipt faded. I can't read it. Get your scan mach machine. No, the best thing that they have now are the scan apps that you can just download on your phone and take pictures of. Mm -hmm. With that, you can send it straight to your tax preparer, and she can pull up everything that's dealing with that. They have different apps that'll go ahead and category everything and make it easy on the tax repair because if you bring in a box of receipts into my office i'm gonna look at you and tell you that i'm gonna charge a dollar for every receipt that i have to touch <laughs> so that makes my client go back and figure this stuff back up <laughs> so what's yeah. so what's the best apps that we can use for scanning is there some you ran into because we don't want to we don't want to drop off a box of receipts and a dollar a receipt now can y'all imagine listen y'all follow me through follow me this right it's the end of the year, right? We went to 365 days of the year. Let's say you, let me grab a calculator so y'all can see the number of receipts that you're about to pay for. If you went to 365 days a year and you collected two receipts per day, just two per day, that's 700, 730 receipts that you about to, that's $730 that you about to pay for when it comes to receipts. So we don't, we don't want to pay $730 for going to, for receipts. Like, so what's the best apps that we can use so we can save that money? Cause that money probably is not a tax write off. Actually it is, oh. but also, yeah, you can. Okay. But also, I will, I will uh, make sure we upload the different apps they have available for the scam receipts. I'll okay. make sure we get those up. Okay, okay. So we'll drop those in the comments a little bit later for you guys to, to look over. So that way you make sure you have it. Because that was $730. If we do two receipts every day for 365 days, that's a lot of receipts. And you know sometimes on a day, on any day, if we take a trip, that's the easy 50 receipts we're going to go through in a weekend alone. So we're going to get those apps out to you guys. So we have a question um, we have a question right here. She asks, uh, Monika, I am horrible at names and I'm going to call you McEastland instead. But her question is, we are in the middle of the year. What if we don't keep the receipts, but pay by business credit card? That's a great question. So she don't actually have the receipt, the paper receipt, but you actually pay by credit card. What is something? What is it that she can do um, in order to keep track of her receipts? Because there's no actual paper receipt for that. Well, if she's using a business credit card and not a personal credit card, right. then at the end of the year, she just have to go through her banks. I mean, the credit card statements and write out everything and hold it all up together, which is not a bad thing to do because you have every. It's, you don't have to worry about separating what's business and what's personal. If right. you're just using that one credit card just for your business. Right. Okay. So that's great. So if you having it um, and we're in the middle of the year, I suggest you start right now. If we at the middle of the year, I suggest you start right now and go back as opposed to waiting to the end of the year and going back through the whole right. year. Cause I, I personally, I did that last year and I hated it. And I said this year I wouldn't do the whole year. I would stop halfway through the year and get that half. And then through, I'll get the other half. It just make it seem more, uh, it's less time consuming at the end of the year okay. to look and see what you did in January that you don't even remember what you did. You can remember back as far as six months, but you like, and I don't know what I did in January, but it's 45,000 receipts. Note to self, don't do that again. January roll around again and you do it all over again anyway. So if you've done that, start right now and just go back and start, you know, creating your tally and collecting that information. That way you don't have to start from January in December, you can just pick up from June or July and move forward that way. So that was a great, uh, a great, great question. Um, is there anything you want to touch on on that? You said she should start halfway through, um, pulling a the receipt. Then uh, we talked about business filing, though. Um, what is a EIC credit? What is, I wrote that down. I don't know what that is. What is that? That earned income credit when people okay. do, when people have uh, 
the reason why I said that, because I see that a lot. I see a lot of the business who make, uh, because when you're filing your taxes, people don't realize that when you're a sole proprietor, you're filing a Schedule C. So that Schedule C is also attached to your personal, your personal tax return. Okay. So I see a lot of clients or a lot of new clients are bringing paperwork to me and I sit there and I look at their, their information and I kind of ask them questions based off what, what's on the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Cause you'll be, you'll be surprised. A lot of them don't go back and look over the paperwork after they get it back from the tax return. Right. From the tax preparer. I'm sorry. So, um, I go back, I always go over the, um, prior tax, prior tax return with new clients. So mm -hmm. I'll ask them kind of, I'll ask them questions like, do you remember how much income you made last year? Mm -hmm. Do you remember how much expenses you made last year? So sometimes the income amount that they tell me never really matches what's on that because sometimes the income would be higher than what's on the paperwork. Right. And I'll see where, I'll see where some preparers say really not knowledgeable let's just say knowledgeable about the different expenses and things like that or sit or, or filing their um their client tax return and they're putting in expenses that higher expenses to bring down that client um agi for the year just so the client will be able to get back a refund right everybody wants money don't get me wrong everybody wants a refund back but you kind of have to ask. You kind of have to ask yourself, what are your plans? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to buy a house? Mm -hmm. Are you trying to be able to get business credit? So sometimes you're gonna have to bite that bullet and make sure everything's on that paperwork that's correct. So your income will be where it needs to be for you to qualify for those things. Right, right. So now we have a little bit more clarification on what that EICN number. Uh, is so I hope now when you hear someone say it you like I know what that is you know what I learned that on build just a line business talk they was talking all about taxes and now I understand the importance of having this number um, so if you guys are interested you like yes this is great great information don't forget to give us those thumbs up and be sure to share this out this is great information that we're sharing with you tonight um, to start a salon business, to be able to grow your business uh, to whatever you're trying to do, to be able to go into the bank and actually get a loan and get approved and qualify for the loan. Oh, should I say it the other way? To qualify and get approved for the loan. So that was wonderful information. So we have another question down here. Uh, we have another guest who asked the question. It says, if I have a DUNS number, how do I use it to build business credit? Great question. That's a wonderful question. Everybody should set up a, make sure when they're setting up their business, mm -hmm. done numbers are free. Mm -hmm. Go in to set up, go in and request a Dunn's number. Okay. Like I say, it is free. It's a Duns and Brad number. So go once you go in and set up a Dun and Brad, some of the companies that you apply for, I know some of the companies dealing with the salon, you have net 30 accounts. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? So you have net 30 accounts. When you're setting up these different accounts, whether it's a staple account or whether it's a one for one of your supply account, whatever it, need, whatever it is, ask them, do they report to the Dun and Brad? To a so, so some if supply they... companies, not, not to cut you off, but let's clarify a little bit of some supply companies. So we might be confused at what supply companies is. So if there's a company that you're buying, say your products from your capes, your, uh, shampoo caps, your plastic gloves, if that's a company that you had to actually go online and create an account for, fill out a number, it could be like a salon centric, a Cosmo prof, another company, uh, Office Depot or Staples or companies like that are the companies that we're referring to, correct? Correct. Yes, okay. that, that is correct. Those are come. So when you're setting up those companies, setting up those accounts, mm -hmm. make sure that you're not using your social unless they ask for your social in mm -hmm. general. If they do not, make sure you're using your EIN number because that will be, that will report to the IRS. That will report and start building your business credit for your business. Just like you have a your social, mm -hmm. which identify you, your mm -hmm. EIN number and your DUNS number identify you your business so you have to make sure that you're using those numbers when you're setting up new accounts when you're setting up business accounts awesome. make sure that you're 
the nose number is so important to be using those numbers because if you don't have any business credits mm -hmm. it makes it harder for you to qualify for loans it makes it harder for you to qualify to uh, expand your business out okay okay so what do we so when so to use the duns number basically we would create the accounts and use the duns number or we use our ein number how do we use the duns number for business credit Basically, how it, how it is when you set it up, it's gonna ask you do it's gonna ask you for your EIN number first. Uh -huh. Then it's gonna ask you, do you have, have a Dunn's number? If okay. you have a Dunn's number, it's gonna give you an option to put that in. Okay. So you're gonna set the account of using your EIN number, but it always asks you, do you have a Dunn's number? With okay. that Dunn's number, it reports to them also. So it's a so it's a whole other type of credit bureau. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So basically just a little clarification. If you guys are just now tuning in, we are talking taxes. Yes. We're talking business loans. We're talking setting up that business structure. We just got finished talking with the Dunn's number, the EIN number and filing your taxes correctly. And the mistakes that we see a lot, well, not me, uh, our special guest, I don't see anything. I talk about business. I seen you guys somewhere else, but our special guest, LaVisha King, uh, a tax consultant is telling you guys all about the proper way of filing your taxes and things that you need. So we've mentioned earlier about filing your taxes truthfully, like truthfully stating how much that you make on your taxes is important because when you go to uh, get those loans, you may not qualify because you don't make enough money because you didn't say you made 70,000, you only made 20,000 but now you don't qualify for the loans. So just that was just a quick recap. Don't forget to hit those thumbs up and I hope you guys are taking notes. This is some great, great information that we're sharing tonight. Um, so we have one more question coming in. Uh, Rakesha asked us, can we build business credit with a sole proprietorship or should we get an LLC first? Great question. No, you can actually, because with the sole proprietor, okay, so the difference between the sole proprietor and an LLC, dealing with the IRS, if you're not a corporation, you're still going to be low, you're still going to be labeled as a sole proprietor when it comes to dealing with taxes. Mm -hmm. LLC is in the eyes of the state. Okay. So regardless, yeah, regardless, the IRS is still going to see you as a sole proprietor because mm -hmm. you're, you're not labeled as a corporation or a partnership. Okay. You only have a one member company. Right. Okay. That was that was good. Label by state. Okay. Okay. That that was great. So um so you can she still build business credit as a sole proprietorship? Or should she Yes, you can okay. you do not have to be a corporation to build business credit or once LLC. You, once you or LLC, correct. Once you set up your EIN with the IRS, you're labeled as a business. Whether you're a sole proprietor, whether you're a corporation, whether you're LLC, it, it doesn't matter. S Corp, C Corp, partnership, you're still you still can build business credit because it's going to be based off that EIN number. Awesome, awesome. That was a great question. You guys got some great questions tonight. If you have any more questions, please. Ask your question. Like I said earlier, there's no such thing as a dumb question, but there is a such thing as you not, not knowing all. because you didn't ask. So I need you to ask. Right. You guys are putting out some great questions. I learned something tonight. So if you are not set up as anything like quote unquote getting an LLC, which is typically what people think you have to have nowadays in order to become a business. So I just learned that today. As long as you establish yourself and get an EIN, well, not yourself, as long as you establish your business and got an EIN number, you are a business. So even if you wanted to be a business under your personal name and you established that as a business and got an EIN number, you are still labeled a business now. You are no more, no longer just a personal person. You have established yourself a business. Um, so Rakesha also mentioned, she said, I started as a sole proprietorship, but someone told me once I do the LLC, I have to start over. And she has a Wells Fargo business credit card. That was interesting. So she started as a sole proprietor. Yes. And then she started, then she someone told her she needs to do an LLC. Correct. And she's having to start 
over and she has a bit she have a well fargo uh bank a card over yes yes basically basically no that is that is not she didn't have to start over actually no she did not because all she had to do is she wanted to be labeled as an llc like i said the llc's in the label is is only for eyes of the state Mm-hmm. Dealing with the IRS, she's still a sole proprietor when when it comes to filing her taxes. So that's mm-hmm. you don't know. She didn't have to start over because she still she still still could have used the same EIN number. Okay, so as a sole proprietor, so, she got an EIN number. So even when she switched to an LLC, she would have still kept the same EIN number, right? She could have she could have kept the same EIN number because, uh-huh. like I said, the LLC is is separating yourself from the business legally. Mm-hmm. So if something happens, the reason why people always push LLC, mm-hmm. for instance, if I come to your salon mm-hmm. and I get chemical burn, right? You inform me about the chemical, I get chemical burn, right? I try to sue you. Okay. First thing my lawyer is going to find out, first thing my lawyer is going to see if how your business is structured. Mm-hmm. Is it is it a sole proprietor or is it LLC? Is mm-hmm. it basically, are you responsible for this business or do your business kind of stand on its own? Okay. Well, technically, yes, you're still responsible, but meaning that it cannot come after your personal assets. Right. You separate yourself from your business because you, you developed an LLC. That's why I always that's why I always tell people, yeah, you're a sole proprietor, but still go ahead and establish your LLC to separate your personal assets from the business. Oh, okay. If someone comes at the, if someone comes at the King Financial Services, King mm-hmm. Financial Services is a a DBA of LLTK LLC. Okay. If they come at if they come at the King Financial is also an LLC. If they come at the King Financial, they cannot touch my personal assets. My t- personal assets is all under me. It's not mm-hmm. under my business. They right. will go after my business. Right. I have business insurance. That's another thing that you guys want to make sure that you establish and get is business insurance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have business insurance. My business insurance is a million dollars. It'll take care of anything that needs to be taken care of dealing with my business. But not so they you can't... because you're separated. Correct. Correct. Got it. Got it. They can't come after they can't come after the Audi. They can't come after the house. They can't come after any of that because that legally belongs to LaVisha King. It doesn't belong to King Financial Services. Right. Okay. I hope you got I hope you guys digested that. So Rakisha, she said she said so I can keep the same EIN number. She wanted to know if she could keep the same EIN number from her yes. sole proprietorship to her LLA. So the answer is yes. So if she keep the same EIN number, she she doesn't have to start all over again. No, because all she's doing is put all she because she she has the same. Actually, do she have the same business? So did her it, business uh-huh. name change? Okay, so did your business name change? Is everything else stay stay the same? Okay, wait. Let's rephrase all that question. And there you go. Well, so did you leave everything the same and just add LLC name. to the end of it? If so, then you can just carry everything over. Yes, she says she have a business insurance with State Farm, and she has that with her uh salon so we're waiting for her to reply back to that but so if she left if you left the name the same and just added the llc to the end then you just carry the ein no in over in ein number over and keep it moving uh yes she said so yes she said everything is the same yes no okay you notify the irs and let them know that you added llc to your name and that's it right awesome yes so she's just restructuring the business so exactly rakisha just keep on moving with everything else let let the irs know that you're just adding the llc and you're just going to keep your ein number and you could just continue on and you don't have to start all over again you've already started you're just adding the llc to the end of your business so that was a really great a really great question um we have another question so if your business name changes um, Kadia asks, she said, if your business name changes, should you keep the same EIN number? Should you move the name over? So I guess she's piggybacking off the other question. So if you added the LLC 
and you change the business name, would you keep the same EIN number? The question, well, that you have to ask yourself, what all is on, what all is tied to that EIN number? Is the EIN already established? Do mm -hmm. you already have credit for that EIN number? Mm -hmm. That's one thing that you have to ask yourself. Because if it's no, if nothing's established, uh, you want to get a fresh start. Mm -hmm. You want to start over. If it's not the same field, then yes, you need to get a new EIN number. You have to notify the IRS that that EI that that um, EIN and that business is dissolved. Mm -hmm. You have to also make sure that you dissolve it through the state. Also, people always forget when they close out businesses that they forget to dissolve it through the state and wonder why you keep getting all these tax letters in the mail that you owe back tax. Mm -hmm, right. They never thought the company. So if you're gonna change the whole build, the whole business, you're gonna change the whole structure, you're gonna change everything. Then yes, you need to make sure you dissolve and cancel and close out that EIN number. And if, if not, you're not anything, if you're just changing the name around, but it's still the same thing, same product, and you already got something established with that business, mm -hmm. what you can't do is do a DBA. Mm -hmm. Okay. Under you can do a DBA the name. Once. Correct, under that name. And you're still using that same EIN number. People do DBAs all the time because it's just they want to add something to that business. But they don't want to leave that EIN number and they don't, because that EIN, that, they may have perfect credit underneath their business name. Right, right. So you don't want to just scrap it and start again if you've built up the credit oh, right. if you've already established it so basically uh kadia that was a really great question so um to get rid of your business name and start everything over again it's a matter of how much you have established under your business already that you're just gonna just let it go from federal and state to start again with a whole new business name and ein number or if you just changing the name around or keeping the name and adding LLC, then you can keep your EIN number and keep that same name and business growing under that same number. If you're just now getting it started and got the bank account and you really haven't got going, you don't have to scrap it and start again just because you're adding the LLC or incorporating or something like that under the name. So you guys are putting out really, really great questions. I hope we are answering your questions also. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about foundation, about the importance of why you need it set up. Remember, I told you I like to discuss the why, not just the how. Um, how to do it is easy, but if you give me the why, makes it, doing the how makes it really easy to uh, accomplish. We discussed about business loans and how do we qualify for the loans. We also talked about filing the taxes correctly and getting all our receipts together to make sure that um, we report exactly how much we making because depending on where you're trying to grow your business, if you're trying to scale it or open up another salon, it all starts with this first salon. It all starts with you in a suite. If you're a stylist in a suite, establish yourself in that suite so that it makes it easier for you to transition out of your single suite into a full service salon. You're just gonna slide right on over from one small area to another. You're not really changing a lot of your, your back end, your uh, establishments and things like that because you already laid it out. You're already here. You're just changing the physical building that you're working in and your business plan. So I love that you guys have given great, great questions tonight. Um, if you have any more questions, please comment your questions. Otherwise, we're going to wrap it up because we got a lot of information to absorb. If we have a lot to do, if we haven't gotten things done, if done, if you don't have a DUNS number, you got to go out and get that. If you haven't got your EIN number, you got to go out and get that. And, um, is there is there a uh, one last question? Is there like specific websites that we should go to to get the EIN number to get the uh, the Duns number? Yes, you can get the EIN number on the IRS.gov. Okay. You can get the you if you, you can also just Google Google E um, Google IRS EIN and okay. it'll pull it up and it walk. So it takes less than three minutes to do it. Okay. As long as you have your business. Name, as long as you have your address that you want that you're using for your business 
and it's going to ask you for some of your personal information. Mm -hmm. How you, it depends on how you're setting up your business. Um, and that's it. And make sure that you have a printer that you're able to print it out or you're able to save it to your desktop. What I always recommend my clients do, if you're using your laptop, make sure you have a folder on top of your laptop and just save that all that information is inside that folder so you have it when you need it. When you go and apply for your bank, your first bank loan, or when you go and set up your business or go get your business license, mm -hmm. some of the things they're going to ask you. Um, and also for us to Dun and Brad, Google to, all you have to do is put in the top of your search and I'll go ahead, we'll make sure those links are available for you guys, but Google Dun and Brad and you'll pop up and you can go through the steps and, and set that up. One thing about Dun and Brad you have to keep in mind dealing with them is they do do Google searches. Okay. So if your business is not a, um, a, a, a structure uh foundation building uh, a building i'm sorry then you may you may want to make sure that address and everything is because they're going to google that address they're going to google and see is your business there mm -hmm. they're going to verify all of that before they issue a dun and brad number even down to your telephone they're going to see if that's a business telephone line right um one thing you can do once you get your ein number set up you can go and get you a business phone line because mm -hmm. that's that's, like I said, that's one thing that the Dun and Brad is gonna verify. They they really do research before they give out a Dun and Brad number. Right. So you have to make sure your foundation is set up correctly before you get one. Good, good, good. Great information. So just a little tip on getting the business line. Your phone that you're using, that you're probably watching us on. You know, the one you be texting the clients back and forth on. You know, the one you send out those confirmation calls. You know. That phone that you use to post to the story so people know about your work, so they see, you know, like that lace front you did, that nice style. Y'all know that's a tax write-off, right? Like that whole phone, the whole thing. That's a business write-off. So it should be in your business name. Hint, hint. I just had to throw that out there. Um, so that was great, great information. Yes, um, Rakesha mentioned that Freedom Voice is a good phone service for businesses, um, and that's where she got hers from. So if you're not quite sure where to get one from, or just go to your local phone, your tel telephone company, whoever your provider is right now, and just get a second line in your business line and let your personal line ride out. Let that contract in and just shift on over to your business line. Your phone is your write-off anyway. Um, so you can, we have one more question that come in. So can you, you, can you use a virtual address or a PO box, um, as the business addressed or are you referring to the business address or are you referring to which one? Um, if you have the answer, then by all means. Okay. So yes, that's a great idea, but don't use a PO box. I always okay. tell clients do not use the P.O. box. Now, why, when why, I why the, shouldn't we use the P.O. box, though? Got to give us the why. I, I, uh, yeah, of course. Of course. I was just about to say it. The reason why is if I put in, if she give me her address and I Google it, uh -huh. it's going to come up as a P.O. box. Okay. Instead of you use, hey, if you if you need a, a, a mailing address, get mm -hmm. a UPS box. Mm -hmm. Okay. Get a UPS box. UPS addresses addresses actually are physical addresses. Okay. Versus it saying UPS or versus uh, versus it saying PO box. Right. So what's the it's, difference in the virtual address and a PO box, and which one uh, can you use? I mean, well, we established that a PO box is not great to use. So what about using a virtual address? Yes, you can use a virtual address because it's gonna come up as a physical address. Okay. Okay. So we need a physical gonna, brick and mortar, not PO box 4562. Correct. It's going to say it's, with the UP address, it may say, um, 322 West main street. Okay. So it's more like, so a virtual address and the UPS addresses are actually like physical street addresses. Physical address. Okay. Correct. Okay. Okay. Got it. And those Correct. are, those are better for business. Correct. Yes, they are. They are a lot better for business okay. instead of you using a PO box or, or instead of you using your home address. Okay. Okay. All right. So it's, also, it's still a tax write off. You get to write it back off your monthly bill from that year. yearly <laughs> expense. You get to write it back off. Right. <laughs> I was going to say, and we get to write off the expense for that. You get to write off your mileages. 
So I so hope y'all catching this. I hope y'all are catching this. Do we have no any more questions? It. Right. No, no money wasted whatsoever. Every time you do something, if you can, we write off the thoughts. Is that a write off too? I'm thinking about business right now. Can I write this off? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> that would be a right. great expense. <laughs> I know, right? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. <laughs> so you guys have yes. asked some great, great questions tonight. So we have, so I need to do a personal and a business return. Rakisha asked, so I need to do a personal and a business return. I'm just going to say yes. I know the answer to that one. Actually, your personal and business return will be together. Oh. You'll be filing, it will be filing, you'll be filing your personal and stuff. On your regular, on your return, then mm -hmm. you'll be filing a Schedule C on that return. Mm -hmm. That Schedule C will be all your business expenses on that part of the return. Wow. See, listen, I hope y'all are listening. So, Rakesha, that was a great question. Unless your corporate. Yes, that was a wonderful question. Her question was, so do you need a, do you need to do a personal and business return? I automatically was like, yeah, girl, you need to do both. Separate it. Well, the answer is obviously no. So I hope you guys are learning something tonight. Yes. And is there, we also have a question. Is there a mileage app? Do you have a, a mileage app? Because we can drop that in the comment as well. Something to track our yes, miles. Yes, you can drop that in the comment also. Okay. Yes, I, it is a great mileage app available. Okay, so we, we got you covered. We're going to get the mileage app and we need the, the receipt app. Okay, so I'm making note of it to yep. make sure that we put those in the comments so that um, you guys know how to track your miles and keep track of your receipts. So you guys are asking some wonderful, wonderful questions tonight. If there aren't any more questions, go ahead on and give me the thumbs up because we have a lot of work to do. We have learned a lot. We have digested a lot. We got a lot of things to accomplish. Some structure maybe to rearrange a little bit. Um, so that we can get right for next season. I know right now we're halfway through the year, almost halfway through the year. So this is a perfect time to just stop what you're doing right now and get things on track and get things ready, you know, for the rest of the year so that, you know, you can have everything in alignment and have everything in order when you want to move to the next level, open up a bigger salon or open up the second salon or go from your salon suite to an actual salon or whatever it is that you're trying to do. Um, if you guys have any other questions, don't forget to comment those uh, in the comments below. We're going to make sure that we come back because later on you may have another question. You probably like, I forgot that. Sure did. Just be sure to ask your question. There's no such thing as a dumb question. And we want to be sure that we get the answers out to you. Um, LaVisha, can you tell, how can we, how can we reach you? We, we have another question in this comment chat ain't working. How can we get our taxes filed or get our business going? How can we reach out to you? Um, I am located. I am on Facebook. It's on the King financial services. Okay. I'm on Facebook. You're going to see, um, in the Birmingham area. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Google. Google, if you search King Financial Services, Alabama, I'm the first one that's going to pop up. Okay, awesome. I, 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 and, and that's another thing that my business do. We do set up Google search. That's what I was missing. <laughs> so, we, so we do set up Google search. So you'll see me first for King Financial Services. Um, on on Facebook, it has the business. It has my business information, the business address, the business uh, telephone number. Um, I, always, I, I, I always have my phone by me. So if I don't um, answer back, you're welcome. I also have my cell phone on me. It's, it's good to text me because I'm all, always with clients. So it's good to send me a text message, and I always always try to respond to text messages. Awesome, so if awesome. If you call and I don't get through, then yes. Right now, the business hours are limited due to the virus, but my cell phone is always open until after 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> I'm asleep. <Yeah. laughs> Those are some late hours. So I guys hope I hope you guys reach out, get your questions answered so we can get your your things in alignment. So if you're looking for different pieces of tax information that you need and you're like the puzzle is not going, you know, together right. Um, you're getting the runaround, especially if someone else told you this. And like I said earlier, if you have that questionable feeling, because sometimes you know the intuition kick in where 
even though you don't know what you don't know, but you still kind of feel like that's that that doesn't sound right. Please reach out to King Financial Services. You can find them on Facebook and make sure that you get your question answered. You know, just ask over here for a second opinion. There's right. nothing wrong with getting a second opinion. Right. If you have two, three people tell you yes, then your first person was right. Just, you know, just, you know, clear clear that information up. So don't hesitate to reach out. Find LaVisha King under King Financial Services on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, I want to thank you. Thank you for taking the time out to be with us tonight. I appreciate you. Yes, knowledge is the key. If you don't know, then you know you're not going to be able to move up and expand your business and be, ses be successful. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Place. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Have a great night. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your night. That was awesome, guys. I really appreciate you guys tuning in tonight, um, being with us with our tax expert, asking your questions that you have, getting the information that you need in order to grow your business, in order to to get over this, you know, this this tax scare that a lot of us have, and just not knowing how to set ourselves up properly so that we can get that loan to be able to expand that business, so that we can um, get that business established and separate it from us. That's first and foremost foremost to separate yourself so that now you can physically see where the business is going and how you want the business to grow. So this was great information tonight. I thank you guys for tuning in. If you are interested in a salon business blueprint club, head on over to buildyoursalonbusiness.com where we have a library of classes and courses for you to take to be able to build a bigger salon business. We You have access to uh, documents that you need in order to incorporate inside of your business from applications to contracts. All of that is available right inside of the membership uh, platform. We have our own forum as well where I am your coach. If you have questions, if you get stuck, I bring guest experts inside of the membership also. And we really get down to business. Like we get your questions answered. So be sure to head on over to buildyoursalonbusiness.com. That's buildyoursalonbusiness.com and become a member today so that you can grow your business to the next level. Now, Build Your Salon Business Talk. We air every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where we bring you professionals that's going to help you grow your business, that's going to help elevate your business to the next level. So be sure to tell a friend, share this video out, and catch us next Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon.